Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter two of Gains, and this one is titled Introductions. After leaving UA, your mum took you to the dessert place that she had promised you before, and you got to eat your coveted waffles. Life was suddenly good again. You could do this. Move to a new school. Again. I mean, you've done it five times now, right? Twice in primary for bullying and thrice in middle school for bullying. This school that you were about to leave had been mostly okay. No one had called you names exactly, but you weren't included in most things. You'd only been at the school for five months anyway, and it was year eight, so everyone had their friends groups already. You got home after the dessert place feeling full and a little numb. You didn't want to think about what the next two days might bring. Before you knew it, D-Day had come and you were in the car again headed for your new school, UA. You'd gotten in on recommendation. You wondered how that was going to fly with the other students. Getting out of the car a little way away from the gate, you said a hasty goodbye to your mum and with head down, stepped right out of the car and into a throng of students flowing towards the entrance gates of UA. Don't even know where to go, you thought, heading into the building with the others and looking up at the numbers on the lockers. You knew which locker number was yours. You'd received it in the, the email, and they'd sent you the key in the mail. You finally found it and placed your bag in and got your school shoes out. Bending down to put them on was hard. It strained your hamstrings to bend that far. Panting, you got your shoes on, and then got your books out and joined the milling students to find your room. 1A. 1A. You looked up at the classroom numbers above each door as you walked to the hall, and when you couldn't see the correct numbers on the door, you kept going. Finding classroom 1A further down the corridor, you exited from the busy hallway and slipped into the classroom. There were a few people in there already, and you kind of gave them a little wobbly smile before looking back down again. Hi! A beautiful girl with long black hair and a ponytail said politely as she walked over to you. Can I help you? Oh, she must think I'm lost. I certainly don't fit in here. You thought as you stared down at your shoes. Um, I'm a new student here. I'm in class 1A. You said softly to the floor. Oh, yes, you're in the right place. My name's Momo Yayorozu, but please just call me your Momo, the pretty girl said. Excuse me, a stern voice said, and you flinched a little and looked up past your Momo to a fairly tall, straight-laced guy with glasses who looked quite strict. He was walking purposefully towards you. May I ask your name and your business here? You quickly looked back down again. Um, I'm a new student. I'm in class 1A, you said timidly. Oh, he said with surprise. Yes, this is class 1A. My apologies. You are in the right place. Hey, a bright voice said, and you looked up to your right. Not sure if the hey had been directed at you, but you'd been immediately drawn to the voice. Your eyes met those of black eyes with yellow irises, and you blinked a few times. Hey, I'm Mina, the girl greeted, putting her hand out to you. Meekly, you put your hand out and shook hers, and she smiled. You're new, right? She asked. You nodded. Welcome to class 1A, she said excitedly. My apologies, my name is Tenya Ida. I am the class representative, the strict guy said with another bow, and you gave him a small, polite smile. You answered a few questions from Mina, Yamomo, and Ida, mostly which school you transferred from and what your quirk was, but you didn't get a chance to say what it was because at that point the teacher walked in and the students scrambled to their seats. The teacher looked like he had just walked out of a bomb shelter, shoulders slumped and a void expression on his face. You watched him enter and then suddenly realised that you'd been left hanging a little as you hadn't quite located your seat yet and so just stood there looking around when the teacher called your name. You looked at him. Come up here so I can make some proper introductions, he said in a bored, tired voice. You just followed instructions and walked towards him, keeping your eyes on the floor just in front of him. Mechanically, you turned to face the class. You had done this so many times. Hi, my name is Yin. You said, staring at the person in the front row's pair of shoes that were poking out from under the desk. Thank you for having me. I hope we have a good year together. It was a rehearsed line, and you waited for the teacher to dismiss you so you could find your seat and sit down. Does anyone want to say anything to you? The teacher asked the class, and you stiffened. Wait, what? This doesn't usually happen? You screeched internally. The boy in the front row raised his hand. Yes, Midoriya, the teacher asked. Um, uh, excuse me, Yin, what's your last name so I can call you by your last name? He asked shyly. Um, uh, it's... You paused. Oh, I hope this doesn't give anything away. You took a deep breath in. It's Lin. A surprised sound rippled through the class 
and the guy who had asked the question made an excited sound of recognition. Oh no, did they recognise it? You thought in a panic. Um, uh, uh, Lin-san? Midoriya addressed you politely. Would you happen to be a light wielder? Ah, oh, crap. You flinched. Um, yes. Uh, excuse me? Another voice called out, and you quickly glanced up and saw a guy with blonde hair and a black lightning streak in it, with his hand up. Uh, what's going on? You heard the teacher groan softly. Uh, would anyone like to explain to Kaminari the significance of Yin's last name? Yes, Midoriya. He called upon the guy who had started this whole mess of a situation. Uh, Lin Sun is a light wielder. She's from the family line that started the era of quirks, Midoriya said excitedly, almost bouncing out of his seat. Ah, Kaminari hummed, still not quite getting it. You know the first baby to have a quirk? The female voice asked the blonde. Uh, yeah, he replied. She's from that family line, the girl confirmed. Your worst nightmare was now a living reality. Oh, 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 whoa. Yeah, okay, that's sick, Kaminari said enthusiastically. Um, excuse me, lin -san? What generation are you? Midoriya then asked. Um, I'm fifth generation, you said softly. What can you do with your quirk? He then asked, and you glanced up to see what he looked like, at the same time that he pulled a raggedy book from his back pocket. Well, that's where it looked like it had come from anyway. Ah, uh, Broccoli Boy with his hero book. Where would we be without Broccoli Boy and his hero book? Stay tuned for the next chapter, chapter three, coming tomorrow. See you then.